Welcome back. It's your boy, Alex Coons. I'm sitting here at Hot Tongue Pizza, and you know what I'm here to do. That's bring you an episode of Pie to Pie. This one with Vito from Angel City Pizza. On the day of this pod, I actually woke up to the DM from Vito, and he was saying, yo, man, hey, I'd understand if you need to cancel. It's raining pretty hard. I wrote back. I said, yo, I'm no soft-ass Angelino, dude. I was raised in the, in the PNW. I, so I put my North Face on, I put my Birkenstocks on, and I was ready for the rain. I threw on some Dave Matthews on my way to pick up Matt, and we were ready to go. No one was on the roads, and it was, it was pouring rain. But hey, that's what we do. That's what we do here to make the pods happen. And sometimes you got to put your life on the line. Because when you're driving in the rain in L.A., anything can happen. Because it might as well be a blizzard snow whiteout on the freeway. It is scary out there. But as a professional pizza delivery driver and a native of the Pacific Northwest, when Dave Matthews is blasting in your car and your Birkenstocks are molded to your feet, nothing can stop you. Vito has been in the game for a long time. We talked about his history, his story, and what it took to open up his brand new concept, Angel City Pizza in the heart of Venice, right next to Venice High School. We talked about serving the community, serving the kids, being closed on Mondays. We complained about California quite a bit, or at least maybe I did. The city of Los Angeles does not facilitate an easy pathway to getting a restaurant open, and it feels as if it's designed for Chipotle. It was a great episode. It was so nice meeting Vito, sitting down in his shop. And you know what? With or without you, the streets are paved with gold. There's only one band that ever just put their album on every iPhone. It was on your computer too? Was it on, uh, what were they called, iPods? Whoa, whoa, the sweetest thing. Dude, I love Bono. I love you too, so does Vito. So, you two forever. Vito is class act. East coast to west coast, it doesn't matter. Pizza is pizza, no one is perfect. That's what this is about. Hearing stories, sitting down, shooting the shit. Hope you enjoy this. Vito from AC Pizza in Venice. Before we start the pod, I want to shout out our sponsor, Zabs. Zabs is incredible. Both their hot sauce sit on every table at Hot Tongue. Their St. Augustine and Original are mind-bending. I'm talking naturally sweet heat and their signature slow burn. They got this secret pepper from Florida called the Dot Teal. It is hot, it is sweet, it is perfect on pizza, on eggs, on anything. And I know that anyone who tries it is gonna love it. If you don't know about Zabs, you gotta check them out. And you know who put me on their hot honey, which I think is better than all of them? Nick Camacho. Shout out the man, the myth, and the legend for putting me on this. I didn't even like hot honey before this, but Zabs changed my mind. I wouldn't put it on every table at Hot Tongue if I didn't believe in how much it could enhance pizza. Do yourself a favor and go check out Zabs. You will not be disappointed. Anyways, I'll stop talking now. Let's get to the pod. Let's go. I grew up in Brooklyn, but I grew up in a town called Long Beach, Long Island as well. Mm -hmm. And Long Beach is like, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't so beautiful. But I mean, we have like a three-mile boardwalk that's elevated. You know, you walk the whole coast. It's, It's really beautiful. So I came out here, the first thing I wanted to see was the boardwalk. And I was like, Dre, I, I want to take me to the boardwalk. I want to see the Jim Morrison picture. I want to do all the touristy shit, my first, you know. So she takes me and we're walking and I'm, and she, I'm looking around and she's like, well, what do you keep looking at? I'm like, well, where's the boardwalk? She's like, you're on the boardwalk. I'm like, this is a fucking boardwalk. It's a concrete fucking sidewalk. What are yeah. you talking about? What, what, you mean you guys don't actually have a boardwalk? Yeah. And she's like, no, that's what we have. Shut up and get over it. And I'm seeing like all these little stores and I was like, you know, trying to look, you know, looking into seeing like, maybe I could do something down here. And I'm going back like 11 years ago. And it was like 22 grand a month. I'm like, and, I'm, and that's the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, I'd have to sell drugs out in this store to make 22 grand a month. Uh, how's that gonna happen? Selling slices, you know? Yeah. So it's- That's boardwalk prices. Yeah, it is. And LA's, you know, LA is a really hard place to do business. Did you always want to open up on the West side? I didn't really care as long as it was a good spot. I live in the neighborhood, so that was a plus, you know, to be involved with the community and everything. And um, 
me and my partner both have sons that go to Venice, and my little one goes to Beethoven Elementary right here. So, we, you know, we figured out, you know, it'd be kind of cool, you know. We kind of wanted to be, like, the shop that, like, you know, kids could look back 20 years from now and be like, oh, I remember we used to cut signs, go hang out in the city, have a couple of slices, and, like, you know, kind of be, kind of grow with the community. Yeah. Because that's, like, what, you know, what, like, what my dad's place was. My, you know, it was, like, every, it was, like, the hangout for everyone, and, you know, like, he like raised like generations like you know they had kids their kids had kids and everybody you know came to our place but you know anyway i want to i don't want to hold you guys up if you no we're rolling we're, oh, we are? we're in we're in the middle of the how about, yeah we always just start like this oh i didn't even yeah, know we're, <laughs> we're in all right. yeah we, we try not to just be like all right let's start because it all gets right. a little awkward so like oh, okay, we're, we're, cool. we're already well, going I, I didn't even know i'm sorry oh don't um, apologize uh yeah. your dad had a shop you want, take us, you want to take us how? How did you get into? How did you start making pizzas yourself? Well, my my uncle actually started this whole bordello when he came from Italy. I think he was about seventeen, um, and he he worked in Little Italy at first in some restaurants in Little Italy. Then he went to work for a man named Lenny, who um, he worked at the Lenny's Pizza where you see you know Travolta go up and get the two slices. He worked in that shop. Um, and then he wound up, I think Lenny had four or five stores and he wanted to sell them all off. So he sold them all off to like his top pizza guys. Um, so long story short, my uncle wound up buying the last store. It was the smallest, it was the newest, it was the least productive store in Flatbush, Brooklyn. And he cranked the store to like, I mean, ridiculous. He was doing like 30 grand a week in the 60s on pizza, you know? And my dad used to tell me these stories and I was like, ah, you know, all right, and that sounds a little far-fetched. And then, like, I would run into people that worked for my uncle years later. They'd be like, dude, I never saw anything like that in my life. Like, we were doing 30K a week in pizza. He's like, I was 16, and, like, your uncle gave me a job, and I was, like, running my ass off, and it was crazy. So he got my dad started when my dad came here. And my dad had the opportunity to go out to Long Island in a town called Long Beach. Um, his uncle had a building out there that they sold to him. That was his first pizzeria. He built it up over the years. Then he went on to buy a restaurant that was down the block from us, and he got into the restaurant business as well. Um, and then that's, that's, that's how I started. I started with making pizza, then I worked my way into the kitchen. And it, it's funny, because now I, I see like all these chefs that, that want to be pizza men. And they want like, like my aspiration at first when I was a kid was, all right, I'm done with the pizza, I want to be a chef, I want to, you know. Yeah, it's kind of in reverse now. It's crazy how up, many like you know? elevated chefs are like opening up pizzerias. Exactly. Yeah. And you see like all these, you know, high end chefs and now like they all want to be pizza men. I'm like, all right. So that kind of, like you said, that kind of reversed yeah. the trend a little bit. But um, yeah, so my dad, you know, I, I learned everything. I learned working in my dad's places. Um, and I also did wind up working with my uncle as well for about 10 years. He got into Tony Roma's. Uh, he had places called Lenny's Clam Bar. He had a whole string of those. And but he were, opened up Tony Roma's? He, he was a um, franchisee of Tony Roma's. Okay, all right, all right. So he had, uh, he had the rights to Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau, and Suffolk. Damn, all right. So he's, your uncle had units. Yeah, he yeah. had eight. He had eight Tony Roma's. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, he was, yeah. My uncle was a very unique guy. He would... <sighs> He would get bored with things and then need to do something else. You know, so he went from Lenny's Pizza, he started Lenny's Clam Bar, then he went into Tony Roma's, then he went into catering, and then in the end, he came back to pizza. Yeah. You know, his pizza was full always, circle. It's, yeah, it's always, you know, you never get away from it. Yeah. Everybody wants to feel like they're contributing or like their stuff is different, but like there's only so many different things you can do with flour and, and water, and salt. You know, but everyone's like, I buy the best ingredients. I use high-end flours, like whatever. But, you know, like some of the best pizzas are still made with four simple ingredients, you yeah. know. And all Trump's, I would still argue, is like the the workhorse of this industry, you know. Yeah, definitely. And and I, and I agree with what you're saying. I think it's I think it's more of people just trying to create their own niche. Yeah. And be different as opposed to it's going to be that much better. And... Um, like when I first came out here, that was my concern. I, you know, I know so many people have come out here from New York and they, they can't duplicate what they did in New York. And I got really worried about it. I was like, you know, I don't know, man, is this water thing true? Is it like, and it's really not. 
you know, it's it's not. You just you 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 have to use a high gluten, you have to use a high protein flour, and um, I mean, I don't do anything to my water. It's not, you know, I'm not like making these like false claims, like you know. I import my water from New York. Well, that's just just a gimmick, like, anyways. Which like, is illegal have, to begin with, yeah, but we won't we won't go into that if aspect. You, if like, you have you a know. New York, like there's those New York water makers, like that, they, like they match the pH and like the alkaline levels, and it's just like it's a waste of fucking money, dude. It's bullshit. You, it's, if you can't bullshit. make if you cannot make good pizza out of like the tap water that you have no, at home, I'd bullshit. reassess your skills. Yeah, you know and, what I mean? Yeah, and I and I honestly I've said this, and, and like people think I'm crazy when I say it. I actually make better dough here than I did in New York. Yeah. I do. I believe and, it. And it's, you know, I mean, the product is good. So far, everyone's been really happy. And, you know, that was my main goal because I, I noticed when I came out here that anything that said New York style, albeit bagels, pizza, anything, was like the worst stuff I had out here. Yeah. You know, and that's that, it's that whole stigmata of like everybody just slaps a New York name on everything and like, you know, you know, and like, you know, people say New York style. Like, what is New York style? You're either doing New York pizza or you're not. It's like it's not a style. It's the way the pizza is supposed to be. You know, I I agree. I mean, if you're gonna call something New York style or a New York pizza, like one, somebody in the building should be from New York, <laughs> and two, like you should be like using all Trumps or a high protein flour and doing thin and crispy slices because that is New York style. You know what I mean? There's this video that just came out recently. Like it's this guy, he's like a nurse and he's like, I keep going to these New York like style pizza places. And like, I come in the door and I'm like, who's from New York? And no one's, he's like, no one's there from New York. Like stop fucking calling it New York style pizza. Mm. It's just, it's a funny thing that people do because pizza can just be pizza, but it, it becomes, it's another gimmick thing. Pizza is one of those things that's evolved so much that like, and it's sad to say this because I am Italian, but like, like, like we really can't claim it as ours anymore. You know, like there's certain foods like you could say, okay, well that's this, that's this, and like you know, but I mean, pizza has just grown so many legs. Yeah. That you like, like we're, we're in, like we can't claim it anymore. Yeah. Every, everyone does it. Everyone yeah. loves it. Yeah. Everyone, you know, it's it's a universal food that. Everybody has their version of it. Everybody has their take on it. And, um, you know, I don't even, I don't even know any Italians besides myself anymore that even make pizza, you know? Um, but, you know, it, it's a funny thing. It's, you know, it, it's good to see that it's, it's crossed like so many generations and cultures. And it's just, you know, it's that kind of food that you can base anything around it. You know, it makes people happy. It's, you know, it's you know, your first thing if you're sitting around watching a game. What do you want? Let's order a pizza. Yeah. You know, let's get a pizza and wings. That's, you know. So I love that aspect of it that, you know, you see little kids come in. I, I just did a party Saturday. I had like 30, 40 screaming little kids in here. <laughs> it was the cutest thing. I shut the whole place down. These people were the nicest people in the world. And I, I asked her, I said, well, what made you come here? And she said, our daughter. She wanted to have her party here. We asked her where she wanted to have her party. She said, I want to go to Angel City Pizza. She says, and, you know, thank, you know, luckily, like, you were able to make it happen. Yes. Yeah. It's like a four-year-old. And that's so cool. Like, you could be, like, a part of a four-year-old's memories. And this kid was, like, so happy. She had the best time. They were, you know, woofing down a pizza. Um, well, see, was- that's, see, that is special because... That four-year-old grows up or continues to come here and then moves to somewhere, like, let's say they move to Florida. It's like the pizza that they are going to like and and want to be reminded of is going to be Angel City Pizza. So, like, yeah. that, that nis- I forget what it's called, nostalgia bias? But, you know, like, you, everyone has that. You know, like, that becomes that person's, like, golden slice for the rest of their life. Yeah. And, like... I don't know, being able to see that and be a part of that, like, it's pretty yeah. rad. And, you know, and you're living, you're living in, a, in a time as well where, like, I don't know, I have favorite spots of mine in New York that I still love. Like, just because I, I make pizza and I own pizzeria doesn't mean I'm not going to like other people's product. You know, I grew up on Spumoni Gardens in Brooklyn. I grew up on DeFaris. You know, I grew up on a lot of good pizzerias. And it seems like we live in a generation now where people, like, build things up just to knock it down. You know, it's like, this is like the new trend or this is great. Or you start comparing it to other places. And then it's like, you know, like I'll see things, oh, it's Moni Garden. It's like, oh, it's not what it used to be. Well, 
what is what it used to be. Nothing is what it used to be. Yeah. You know, products aren't the same as they used to be that we're using. You know, there's a whole lot of things to factor into it. And then it's like, okay, like the guy's around for 80 years. He's got to be doing something right. You know, even, yeah. even like, you know, DeFarans, you know, like the old man Dom passed away. Sadly, this guy was a sweetheart. I knew him when I was a little kid. I used to go in there. And, you know, now people are like, oh, well, DeFarans ain't the same since the old man died. You know, it's like, all right, well, his daughter was working with him there for 30 something years. She, well, it's she, all perspective. She was probably yeah. making your pizza half the time and yeah. not him. But now all of a sudden, like, he, like you had to find that thing to knock them. Like, why? You know, it's... That, that's the only part of the business I don't like, where people, like, you know, one day you're, like, you know, you're the bee's knees, and the next day it's, like, you know, you're passe. Yeah, you're trash. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's a... I don't know why that is, why humans do that. I mean, you could... Like, there's just a... Per perception switch in their heads where it's like yeah. nothing could change but because of some piece of information they got or like mm. some kind of day they're having like things just don't aren't the same anymore yeah. you know and nothing absolutely nothing could change you know we were talking off camera like I added meat to my menu and cheese to my menu and I got all this hate nothing changed other than the fact that meat and cheese you know came into the building. None of the vegan pies changed, but I had people saying like, it's not as good anymore. It doesn't taste the same. It's whatever. Because they have to grab and latch onto something. And, and, my, and my point, my retort to that would be, okay, well, if you guys are so concerned about why I changed, obviously I changed for a reason because there's not enough of you coming here for this. Yeah. And I have to keep my doors open. Yeah. You know, so... Okay, if you wanted this to stay, then where was your part in this? Yeah. Obviously, if, if you're a vegan, you have a lot of vegan friends. Are you bringing your friends to me? Yeah. Are you putting me out there in your community to let them know, hey, this place is like kick-ass, man. They've got some good, you know. So obviously, there's a reason why I did what I did. Yeah. I didn't just do it because, you know, I felt like it. You know, that's another part of the business, too, that, you know, and I guess it's anywhere, not just L.A., but... People don't really realize what we have to go through to keep our doors open. Absolutely not. You know, they really don't get it. When it comes to rents, insurance, your utilities, your staff, you know, and, you know, I have kids that work here, you know, they're 16, 17 years old. They get paid like adults now. They get paid like everybody else. Yeah. I never got paid that when I was 16 years old. I know. That was the part of the business where it made it easier for you to be able to manage it because, you know, you could have that kid working his way through school, looking mm -hmm. for that job, make some extra money. It wasn't meant to be a career move. Yeah. You know, now you're paying these people like it's their career. And I, I, don't, I don't think people understand, you know, they think well, like you're a store owner, like all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, you're great. You know, like, you, you know, you, you, you're driving a new BMW truck, you're driving, you're, you're doing this. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Dude, it's not like that, bro. By the time I pay my rent, my staff, my insurance, my, ta I mean, taxes alone on what you have to pay on your payroll, it's, there's a lot involved, you know, the permits to open, the, especially in LA, the requirements are like, I mean, it's ridiculous, you know? And it's really, it's almost like you're, you're buying yourself a job. It's like job security, at least, is your only, like, benefit. At least you know you have a job you can go to every day. But yeah. it's not, you know, it's not like it was. Yeah, but after all those people are paid, it's not even guaranteed that there's yeah. money left for you. No, exactly. Or even enough money to pay for payroll sometimes. Like, dude, it's scary as fuck. It is. I've, dude, I've had weeks where I've broke my ass here the whole week and I go home with nothing. Yeah. I don't get a salary that week. Yeah. But, you know, when I make sure my staff gets paid, obviously. And as long as they get paid and, you know, you know the vendors get paid and everything else gets paid... It's like, all right, man, that's part of being a business owner this week. You don't get paid. Yeah. You know, and you figure it out, you know, and it's. That is like, that, that is one of the biggest critiques that I hate from customers is when they like complain about pricing. Um, because one, it's the most transparent thing, right? Tr prices are everywhere. Yeah. But you can't come into an establishment and get mad about something like the, the way somebody has set up their business because like you don't know what it takes to survive, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like those prices are just, it's not like people just, I mean, I'm sure there's some restaurants that can just, like if you're on the boardwalk, you have to charge more. Okay, yeah. Those are boardwalk, boardwalk prices. You know, your rent's gonna be a little higher. People are gonna pay that premium because you're on the boardwalk. But most people aren't gonna just fucking slap a, a price 
on their menu and say, yeah, this is it. Like you're doing all of those things intentionally and, and trying to explain that to a customer sometimes is really tough or just a lost cause, you know? I don't know. Dude, I, I get people that come in here and complain about paying $4 for a cheese slice. I'm like, dude, are you serious? Like, do you know how much cheese and oil is now? And, you, know you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And it's not, and you, know, you know, people want the best and they want to do this and add this on and add this on and add this on. And then they get the price and they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, you think I don't pay for the sausage? You think I don't pay for the mushrooms? I don't, you know, you want to put 17 toppings on your pizza. That's why I designed specific specialty pies. So you wouldn't have to go through all that right? and get a discount if yeah. you just order this pie. Yeah. But you want to be Picasso and you want to redesign the whole pie. <laughs> And then you want to know why the pie is costing you $46. It's yeah, like, well, and you, it, and you it, just it, put it, 17 it, toppings on it. And what do you think? I, I don't pay for them. I mean, we, and, and our products, if I, you know, honestly, you know, people put up cans, you know, to show you what they use. And like, you know, some of them are full of shit. You know, they're not using that. But, you know, I keep everything out in the open. I mean, I, I make, we make our sauce right in front of everybody. We have yeah. a two blend. I use Alta Cucina. I use Full Red. We use Grande only grande, mm -hmm. grande cheese, you know, the flour, like we discussed, all trumps, you know, oil, this, that, you know, these, these things come into play. And if you want a quality product, I'm, I'm giving you that because yeah. I refuse. I'm not going to lower my standards and I'm not going to put shit out, but don't come in here and complain when you have to pay for it. Yeah. You know, you can't want the best and expect to pay the least. Yeah. You, gotta, you know, you got to meet, you got to meet us in the middle. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I've gone to pizzerias where I get like, two slices and a soda and it's literally like almost $17. I'd say that's like about right these and I'm days. Like, yeah. Okay. And then you come in here and you're complaining it's, it's like a slice is four dollars. Yeah. A Sicilian is five dollars. Like you know the process it takes me to make a Sicilian? I know. Well it's like it is an art form in a lot of ways, especially with squares and stuff. Like the amount of like proofing, stretching, resting, baking, rebaking, mm -hmm. like that that's a re there's a reason people pay or like sell their slices their, their squares for like seven eight nine bucks because mm -hmm. th there's a lot of work that goes into those things yeah. and then people are just like you know why is this nine yeah. dollars like, well, you're just seeing the finished product yeah. you're not seeing what it took for me to get this to you're you. Like, you why is a gucci shirt t-shirt 250 dollars right. yeah <laughs> because it's fucking nice because they slapped the g on yeah it and like you know and that's the funny thing is that they'll come in here and bitch about a fall out of the slice and then you, you know, and then they walk out and you see they're wearing like $200 sneakers. Yeah, or like, yeah it's of like, course. It's like, you know what? You, you go out and you buy all this expensive mark, you know, all this expensive material shit, but then what you're putting in your body, you're complaining about paying for. I think about this all the time because I know, feel like so many people are so far away from their plate that like that, that like food is just this thing that they don't think about that should right. be cheap and easy to eat. And it's like, yo, like this is time. This is love. This is like right. good shit. You have to have that love in your product. And if you don't, it's going to reflect. And I, I'm a big believer in that. Like, you know, even like when it came to my dad, I could make pizza right alongside my dad using the same dough. Same sauce, same, same everything. Yeah. And our pizza would never come out the same because you just, you have your own way of doing things, you know? And like my dad had a way of kneading the dough when he made a pie and it's just the way he kneaded it, it just got so much air into the pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why like when I, I, you know, I see people that make pizza and like they're like, they're mashing it and mm -hmm. sorry, and doing this. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Italian thing, I'm sorry. But, um, and it's like, all right, you just, you're kind of just mashing the dough into the stone. You're not, you're not getting anything. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's an important part of the process. Yeah. And like, you have to put yourself into what you're doing. If you're not going to put yourself into what you're doing, it's going to reflect on what you're making. What has been like one of the biggest struggles in, in just opening this spot and, and operating? <sighs> um... Well, build out wise, it was, I mean, just LA is just, LA is not mom and pop friendly at all. And so when did you, when did you start the build out process? Um, we started in, we signed our lease in April of 2021. Okay. And we had a four month build out. Uh, obviously, you know, it took us longer than that. And it, I mean, by LA standards, it actually wasn't too bad. We were open within a year. Yeah, Which is pretty good for out here. It, it, it did it take you six months for permitting? 
it took us a few, you know, the positive thing we had is that my partner is a contractor. Yeah. So he knows like how to work around the building department and, how, you know, health department was new for him, but he knew how to do like the building department stuff and, you know, who to see. So we had a, a little bit of an advantage on that because he knew the processes to getting the permits he needed. But it's the problem when you deal with well, a lot of these departments is like the left hand never knows what the right hand is doing. So you'll get one answer for one person and then you go back a different time and you, you don't get that same person. And now they're giving you a whole different set of things they want, uh -huh. you know, and it's um, enough to make you want to fucking. No, no, out. dude, it's crazy. You know, and then they come in with all this new environmental stuff and it's like, dude, you know what? I get it. We got to be conscious of the environment. That's not, a, I don't have a problem with that. But when you're making me jump through hoops to do all these new things and then a guy can buy a restaurant that was formerly a restaurant and all he has to do is do a spruce up so it's like okay well this guy's been killing the environment for 30 years so just keep it going just keep it going yeah. what's the difference you know if you're going to do that incorporate it where okay look you guys have three years to come into compliance with these new codes everybody has to be on the same playing field you know because now i had to spend an extra twenty thousand on my on my hoods because now they require a full suppression system even over the pizza ovens yeah whereas before it, it was a baker's a baker's hood air yeah. in air out you're uh -huh. done you know that's an extra 20k you're talking about right there easy you know, to have a fryer yeah they wanted me to dig out a trench in my parking lot and drop a 300 gallon waste tank in yeah. the ground restrap just to have one fryer yeah like eighty thousand dollars later like, come on are you serious Ooh, we want the vegan meats. We want the vegan cheeses. Are people coming up to you and asking you, do you have vegan options? Do you have vegan meats? Well, guess what? A lot of them are not that good, but there is one that reigns superior and that is Beehive. Everything that they make at Beehive is levels ahead of what you can get in a grocery store. Their pepperoni, their crumbled sausage, their cheeses, there is no contest and the owner is one of the coolest people I have ever met. They make incredible products that go on your pizza and it is dope plant food. That's what they call it and that's what it is. Beehive, the best. Look no further, it's Beehive, baby. Straight out of Nashville, good people, great product. Check them out. Staffing-wise is a challenge as well, you know, because you get people that, you know, and it's not to knock anyone, but I mean, work ethic now is not what it used to be. Yeah. It's not, you know, when I was a kid and, you know, when I was coming up in this business, like you didn't disrespect the chef, you know, the chef was, you know, not everybody had the right to call themselves a chef. So now everybody, you know, they put up. Everyone's a chef you know, on Instagram. You know, you know what I'm they, saying? Yeah. Yeah. They, they put a frozen pizza in the oven and, and they're yeah, a chef. Like a you know, chef. I mean, dude, and honestly, and I hate to shit on it because I'm not like that, but I can't even watch the, I can't watch the bear. I can't watch it, you know? And so hiring is a challenge as well because, you know, everybody walks in the door. The first thing they want to know is what's their break? What's lunch? How much am I getting an hour? What's my days off? What's, you know, it's like, like you're more concerned about you getting a break before you even walk in the door, you know? It's true. And I would, I would say that California, like, really makes it tough for, for business owners in Los Angeles. I think that, like, they push a lot of, a lot of the stuff that, they want to have happen is like a fair minimum wage or a retirement plan. All these things are just like pushed on the employer. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, California is great. Come over here. There's a $17 minimum wage and like you get a 401k and like. Exactly. And you know, and, and it hurts the business in more ways than one. It hurts the business because A, I mean, obviously you don't want to underpay people, but like when we were growing up, you didn't have, you didn't have that. And it was a much easier to staff. You know, and, and aside from just the financial aspect of it, how do you explain to your cook who's making what he's making and he's making maybe a few dollars more an hour than a kid on their first job that obviously you have to train because they've never had a job before. Yeah. And now this guy's in the kitchen breaking his ass knowing that, okay, well, this kid that doesn't know shit is making what, two or three dollars an hour less than me? Yeah, I know. And it's tough like then with management, it's like you have to really pay your managers. You have to like go way up the scale because, or they're not going to want to do it. And then you get tips involved and it's just, it's crazy. Because right. if everyone's splitting tips, 
then everyone's almost making $28 an hour. And then how the fuck yeah. do you pay somebody to be a manager, you know? Exactly. And that's, you know, that's obviously what we do too. We have a, you know, all the tips get split up between, you know, all the employees and yeah. it helps because it gives them that little extra boost. Oh. And listen, I'm all for higher wages. You know, I just feel no, like absolutely. for those higher wages, there's going to be prices increases on your menu right. and the, the, the customer needs to understand that. And then there's a higher expectation for the employees that I hire personally. Yeah. It's like, yo, if you're starting, if your base salary is at $17 an hour, like, this is the job and this is what is expected. And like, let's, yeah. let's, do, let's I don't, go. I don't want to like put that out there wrong. I'm not complaining. Me about neither. The Me pay, neither. That's why I'm kind of like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, complaining I'm, I'm about dialing like, it back. Like, you know, people <laughs> I'm all for fair wages. Yeah, no, exactly. It's just and, tough. I, and it's not to, to say like, oh, I hate California though. But you have to understand that when you're going to fight for something like that, then you have to deal with the ramifications of what come with it. Okay? Yeah. Don't start bitching at me now because you're paying 20 bucks for your Big Mac meal when you were the one fighting for them to have to pay more money. And exactly, that's you how know? I agree too. And now you're like, oh, well now my Big Mac is 20 bucks. Yeah, your Big Mac is 20 bucks, schmuck, because you were sitting there, you know, on your soapbox, like, you know, and that's great. It's cause I we, wish I could afford to pay everyone 20 bucks an hour. Yes. I love it. If I was doing that kind of business, uh -huh. where I could just throw out 20, 25, you know, God bless, take it. Yeah. But when I'm like fighting to keep my doors open, yeah. to pay my staff, that's, that's because not, staff that's price not business 101. Yeah. That's yeah. not a good business model, you know? So I don't agree. come in here and complain, you know, oh, this is kind of high priced. Yeah, you know why? Because I'm paying my people when I'm supposed yeah. to be paying them. Talk to the mayor. Right. Uh, I, I just wanted to mention, because some people don't like know this, but when we did our build out, you talk about like environmental stuff, like we had to have this whole lighting plan because when you have natural window light, I don't know if you had to do this too. It, there's a code for it, but like your, and it looks like your lights, like they have to be a, they can't be bright, like super bright because you have natural window light. So right. they, you have to have this lighting design yeah. so that it's like environmentally sound and you're using less energy and your, your, your like light bulb wattage is, I forget what the, there's like a whole inspection that you have to have. I'm sure you had it too, but it's just fucking crazy. Like I tell my brother-in-law in New Jersey and he's yeah. like, dude, they're just, they're getting you everywhere. Yeah. I, you know, and again, like it's a touchy subject. Yeah. Like, you know, you want to do your part to help the environment. Obviously, you know, we all want to live in, you know, the best place we can, but then you have to ask yourself at what point are the intentions sincere and at one point are the intentions, well, this is another revenue stream for us. Yeah, and another okay. hoop for you to jump through. You know, and, and, I've, and I've said this about recycling for years. I had friends back in New York that were congressmen, councilmen, and I mean, told me this 20 years ago, like, dude, this recycling is bullshit. It's bullshit. 85% of this shit we make people do just goes where it was gonna go anyway. Yeah. You know, but what does it do? It creates more jobs, it creates you got three different color cans now. You know, somebody's making money making those cans. Dude, we're gonna get, you got they're three, shutting us down. You know, you got three different sanitation. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's great. Workforce wise, I love the idea of, you know, you're creating a revenue stream for people to have jobs. Yeah. But, you know, when you're creating another revenue stream for people, you know, for corporate entities to make money off of, you know, you start to question, like, all right, how much of this is really sincere and how much, like you said, it's just a money grab. And who's paying for it, you know? Yeah. Uh, small business owners? Because that's what it feels like. Yeah. You know, meanwhile, you can come and open up a Target and, like, they're kissing your ass to open it. <laughs> yeah. And you're getting tax incentives and you're getting this and you're getting it's that. I mean, it's like, dude, does Target need this? They're a multi-billion dollar corporation. Like, we're the guys that need the incentive yeah. to come in and open, yeah. you know, a mom and pop. We're the guys that need the help to keep the doors open. I think they will, I think it will get harder and harder and harder to open up a mom and pop shops. You know, there will be more bigger box people coming in and doing this and more, more investment groups that will buy pizzerias and, and spread them out. I mean, I don't think it's getting e any easier. And then that's when you dilute it because no matter, no matter what, you know, listen, I, I can have a guy come and buy me out tomorrow. Let's say I open five of these. It's not going to be the same. It's never going to be the same. Yeah. Because you know? the first, you know, I, I dealt with a, with a cheese when I was first testing out my, my cheeses, you know. And 
I'm a grande guy. I've always been a grande guy. Yeah. But, you know, you get your distributors, they come in. Oh, you know, this is as good as grande. This is as good as grande. They always say this is good as grande. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? So so I took all the free cheese they gave me Mm -hmm. because it was great to do test runs on. Yeah. We were getting, you know, everything down. I said, okay, well, I got free cheese, so let's just make all these pies because these are just demos and I'm trying to get my product right. So, yeah, if you want to give me cheese, give me cheese. And I noticed, like, there there was a cheese, like, pizzeria I worked in back in New York used to call F and A. And it was actually a decent cheese. It was, it was pretty good. Yeah. So they got bought out. And the first thing they do is they change the recipe. And I'm like, well, I don't understand. You, you bought this for a reason. Now, why are you changing it when you bought it? Why don't you just leave it the way it is? Yeah. Because you bought it because it was a good product. You know, now why did you change it? You know? So, you know, and, and Anytime corporations get involved with anything, you know they're going to dilute it. You know it's never going to be the same. Yeah. You know, so, okay, you're going to knock out the mom and pops. And, you know, it's kind of like the Home Depot effect. You know, I have a lot of my family lives in Clearwater, Florida. And my, my cousin worked for Home Depot as far back as the 80s. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he told me, he said, dude, they're going to come to New York. They're going to they're gonna knock everybody out. I'm telling you. And they did. And now, okay, you've got 50 Home Depots and like a lot of the mom and pop hardware stores stores got knocked out, you know, and when Home Depot first opened, you'd walk in there and there'd be 60 people working to the point where it was annoying. Like, you know, can I help you? Can I, you know, now try to find someone at Home Depot when you go in there, you know? So, so you took something away and then after you took it away, you diluted your product Yeah. to the point where now, okay, the mom and pop guy is gone. Where I can go in and be like, you know, hey Joe, I need. Oh yeah, we got this. It's over here on this shelf. Boom, boom, boom. And you need this, and you know, you know, now you go into Home Depot and you're talking to somebody in the plumbing department, and they have no idea anything about plumbing. Yeah, you know. So, do you want to do that to all your mom and pops? Do you want to knock the pizza guy out to have, you know, a dough press and this and a dough baller and a, yeah. and a this and a, you know and you know, I don't, and you're right. I think that's the point that it seems like they're trying to go is just to have everything, you know, well, marginalized. Pe- people, people want things right now. Convenience, like, it sells, you know, like, especially going through COVID too, like that only got worse. Mm-hmm. Third party delivery for pizzerias, it was already bad. After, the, after COVID, there was no coming back. That was the only way. I was a big supporter of in-house delivery and I, it will soon be the thing of a past. Oh. We can talk about like that Super Bowl situation that you had. People constantly, and dealing with people, you see this more like when you're a public service and you're a servant and you're in the service industry, you know people just live in their own reality. They constantly do not think about what is going on around them. I mean, you see this all the time when, when you know, the story that you told me, the s- biggest day in, in pizza, the Super Bowl, and somebody comes in and they're a little upset about their order being being late. Well, lady, like, understand where you're at, what today is, and how this works. Right. You know what I mean? But but everyone's just like me 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 me. You know, got a lot of opera singers now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of opera singers. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It's and again, that comes down to you know you always gotta have a smile on your face. You always gotta. You know, it's, it's just what it is. You know, you, you're, you're, you get people that understand. And I had a guy, um, I woke up on Monday, you know, day after the Super Bowl, I went out for breakfast. And um, I got an alert on my phone from my pot menu. And these people, I mean, they had, they had a really nice order. It was like multiple pies, they got wings, they got salads. And the guy took the time out to write us on our, on our website and compliment us how great everything was. He had the chicken, uh, chicken vodka parm pizza. He got the tie dye pizza. He got this, and and it was nice. The guy just really was like, you know, even that it was Super Bowl Sunday, understood that you know it's a little bit of a process, and just wanted to tell us, hey, you guys are doing a great job. Yeah, it was amazing. It was great. And I was like, all right, you know what? Like, somebody gets it. Yeah, you know. And it's kind of like when you're golfing, like you know. <laughs> You might break like three clubs while you're golfing from getting pissed off and be like, I'm never playing this fucking game again. And all of a sudden you sink that one putt and like, 
you're coming back next week. Yeah. You know? And that's what it is. You get like, you know, you get those one or two people that get it and you're like, all right, you know what? This is why I do what I do. And this yeah. is why I'm able to take the shit that I got to take because there are people that do appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. And I think probably the majority of people do, you yeah. know, like, and, and I think it's, for me personally, it's always easier to concentrate on that one negative person or like see, well, you know, I can, I get, my wife always says like, look, you just had like your biggest day and all these people are saying it's great pizza and like, don't concentrate on this one asshole, you yeah. know, but it's like the only thing you can hear. And that's the thing is it's, it's that one asshole that gets you. Yeah. It's that one asshole that makes you focus and be like, 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 really? Come on, man. Like, you, you want to throw like, your apron at somebody's face. Yeah, and my wife tells me the same thing. She's like, you know what? She's like, you've been doing this for so long. And, you know, she's like, and, and any one of my friends I bring there, and I, you know, everyone always compliments it. Everyone loves it. She's like, what are you worried about? Stop. Yeah. And she's like, you're always going to get someone like that. It's what it is. Do you have a favorite slice in L.A. outside of your own? <sighs> um, I heard you on Bruce's podcast. You said there's not a lot of good pizza out here. Well, I mean, what I find, I mean, look, in the last 10 years, the pizza game here has definitely come a long way. And when I first- Also, moved, is, have, you, have you just been living in LA for 10 years? I, yeah, I'm going on 11 okay, years. Okay, 11 May years. May will be 11. Okay. Yeah. It's changed a lot in no, 11 it, years. It has changed yeah. a lot in, in more ways than one. And, and the pizza game has definitely stepped up. I've heard about some places that, you know, people are raving about that I haven't had a chance to try yet. Uh, some I have tried and I'm like, okay, well- <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> but, um, um, I'm, you know, and, and again, it, it all goes back to what you like. And of course. I'm, and I'm a classic pizza guy, you know, and, um, you know, I like Joe's. I think Joe's does a great job. He's, have you had Vito's here? I have. Yeah. I actually met, I met Vito, um, before COVID when he only had his place on La Cienega. Uh -huh. And um, he actually sat down outside with me. He has like a little yeah. kind of courtyard thing there. And uh, and I sat and talked to him for about a half hour. He's a Jersey guy. Yeah. Really nice guy. I, you know, I liked him. We had a good conversation, you know, about back East and everything. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I haven't actually, I, I haven't had a speech in a long time. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, he, you know, he makes a nice pie. He had broccolada, which I really liked because it's hard to find broccolada out here. Yeah. You know, it took me six months to even find it because I didn't even know you guys call it something different out here. Like it's called rapini out here. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And I'm looking for broccoli up and I'm like, but wait a minute. I, I, I was buying Andy Boy for years in New York and Andy Boy comes from California. Yeah. Why am I in California and I can't find broccoli up? Change up the name. Uh, so what's the plan? Do you want, do you want more than one of these things? I do. Yeah. I would like, I mean, my intention is hopefully if everything goes right, maybe three to five, you know, and to find a way to do it without compromising the quality. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. You know, I mean, my partner discussed it and we were like, yeah, you know, we do want to do more, but you can't do number two until you know, number one is a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Cause that's your reputation. That's what you're building. You know, that's, that's your foundation. Um, so we just want to make sure, you know, we have everything the way we want it. Everyone trained the way we want, where we can get to the point where I don't have to be here. I can go scout other locations, open other locations, get people trained. Um, and like we, you know, we, we talked about, you know, it's challenging with the workforce now. So you have to make sure you have enough people that you can pay them, you know. Are you here every day? I'm here every day, pretty much, yeah. Open to close? I, yeah, in the beginning I was seven days, open to close, you know, that's why we originally started closing on Mondays because my partner was like, dude, you know, take a day off. You're gonna, you know, yeah. I didn't open this place for you to have a heart attack. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be fun. Yeah. You know, so that's why we originally opened up with, you know, being off the Mondays. But, you know, still in the beginning, there's always something to do. Just because we were closed doesn't mean I wasn't here. Doesn't yeah. Mean, you know, you know make, let's make some dough, make sure we're set for tomorrow, let's mm -hmm. make, make some sauce, make this, make that. The opportunity for growth, personally, for me is to grow with the people that are in the, the, my program right now. Like if you, if you want to be there and you want a future in this, then like, let's, let's, let's create that opportunity. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I, if I opened up 
three or four, which is probably what I would like to do. I mean, I'm talking about like giving full ownership or like some profit sharing to certain people because it's like, yeah. yo, you were there for the first three years. Like you want in, like, let's, let's go. Yeah. And again, I would, you know, I, I would love to do something like that as well. And I always felt like, you know, Outback, I always felt had a great business model. Okay. What Outback would do is you'd be a manager, a GM in one of their restaurants, and then you'd be in line to get a store. So they opened up the location and you became a managing partner in that store. So whatever your percentage was, yeah. 5%, 10%, but like you were working towards something. And it was, I felt it was a very smart business model on their end because you know what, now you got a guy, you're giving him a piece of the action and he's gonna look out for that place like it's his own because it is, it's yeah. partly his. Yeah. And it's always different when something is yours as opposed to you're running it for somebody, somebody else. else's. Yeah, of course. You know? And I always felt that was a great business model. You know, and I always resented in a way, the way my father brought me up in this business until I got older and I realized it. You know, my dad was like, there wasn't any free ride because you're a son. I started in the dish room. Yeah. I worked in the dish room for the first six months, 12 years old of my restaurant career, you know? And I worked with three guys that didn't speak a lick of English. And I said that, how am I gonna talk? They don't speak English, how am I gonna talk to them? He goes, that's great, you'll be bilingual by midnight. That was his answer, you know, don't move till I tell you, get in there, you know, and, I, and then I got promoted to, you know, doing pasta yeah. and side dishes. Yeah. So was, my dad's restaurant was like old school. You got a salad when you sat down yeah. and like your side dishes came on a side plate. They didn't come everything on one plate back yeah. in those days, you know? So I was responsible to the side pasta. Then I moved up to the grill, then I moved up to saute, expediting, you know, so I had to earn my spot. Just because yeah. my name was on the sign didn't mean anything. You know, my chef told me to do something and God forbid, like I, my father would throw me out of the kitchen. Yeah. I need him. I don't need you. I need him. He walks out and that's why he, my, my dad's way of training me was, you need to know how to do everybody's job so you're never at anyone's mercy. If somebody walks out, you need to be able to do their job because then they're gonna think twice about just walking out. Because that's, again, like we were talking about human nature. Human nature tends for people to be, if, if they think you're dependent on them, then that's going to affect also the way they do things to, to a point too. Yeah. I couldn't agree more with that. Also like being a good owner, I think is being well-rounded in every single position. Like that's, I think that's what I have been in so many situations as an employee. Oh shit. Someone's trying to call and we can just let it go. I was just saying that it's important to be like well-rounded having that experience in everybody's position not only will somebody think about it twice because like you can step in and whatever, but having the perspective of it, maybe, you know, being on the grill, being in the shit, you know, being a driver constantly. I've, I, I, can, I can have an, a, a conversation with two, two of the team members, somebody who's a cook who's complaining that the drivers don't do as much and don't deserve the tips. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but I can come from, I've, I spent, four years delivering pizzas and it's no fucking easy job. Is it nice being in your car and coming back and forth? Yes, it is. But like when it's raining like this in Los Angeles or, and you know, you have three, and there's you nowhere have, to park. Yeah, and there's there's nowhere to look at this guy. There's, there's a guy trying to deliver food right now and somebody's not answering their phone. He's getting dumped on, you know, like the pizza cook doesn't understand that they get to stay in one space dry as hell. And like, but they're also getting beat in a, in a different way, you know, like, so it's, it's always easy for team members to kind of like point fingers, but having that, that frame of reference in every single position, and then also being in those positions and being treated a certain way by a boss has also helped having, having a conversation with, with that employee. Now it's like just fucking beeping. And I think it adds to that mutual respect as well, because they're always going to, your employees are always going to respect you more if you're in the trench with them. Of course. They know you can do of course. what they can do. You're not just the asshole that's paying them and, and you don't know shit, you know? And I think that that makes them relate to you a lot better as well, knowing like, hey, you know what? This guy can make a pie just like me. This yeah. guy can, you know, he doesn't care about, you know, sweeping the floor or, or, or mopping the floor or cleaning the toilet, you know? And that was a thing like, like my, my, you know, and again, my dad, you know, certain things you just have ingrained in you you know, and I, and I, stupid little things you remember that are so minuscule, but they just stick in your head. And I remember one day I was sitting in our takeout behind the restaurant with my dad, and there was a napkin on the floor. 
you know, a waiter walks by and walks by, and a busboy walks by and walks by, and this guy walks by and walks by, and not one person stopped to pick up that napkin. So after about five minutes, my father gets up, he picks up the napkin, and he throws it in the thing. Yeah. And I said, you know, and he just looked at me, and he knew what I was thinking, and he said, that's why I'm the boss. That's what you're doing, you're a boss. You see everything. Everything is your job. Nothing is beneath you. Nothing is above you. Yeah. That's, you want to be a boss one day? That's what being a boss is. 100%. Not just counting the money every Sunday night. Yeah. Picking up that napkin when it's on the floor, you know, uh, wiping that table when four people walk by and nobody bought us to wipe it. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the difference. And that's what you have to instill in yourself is, you know, you've got to be there to do the shit too. Yeah. Not just to like, you know, have the accolades. Yeah. You know. Um, well, it's respect, and it also is like it, having that eye of being able to see everything. Like whether yeah. you know it's that napkin that three people just walked past, or like the top of a garbage can that has soda just sitting on top of it that yeah. everyone just looked at for the last hour, but has been <laughs> killing you. And it's like, why is no one getting that? Because <laughs> like, like no one sees stuff like that. You know, that's like that's the stuff that irks me. Like underneath the table, like you said, like somebody's like little piece of crust. And it's like, does no one else see that? Right. Am I the only guy seeing that? Or am I just the only guy that gives a fuck? Yeah, flag? exactly. You know, uh, it's an interesting business we've chosen. I know. You know. I always say it's pretty masochistic. I used to yell at my father all the time. Be like, dude, all the shit you had, like, like you had to do food. Couldn't open up like car dealerships. So like, you know, going to real estate, like something easy. Yeah. You know, we could just like dress nice, drive nice cars and not have to worry. And like, you know, like out of all the shit to choose, like this is what you, this is what you chose, yeah. you know? Well, the one thing I do, I think I have fallen out of love with certain things in the restaurant industry, but I have gained a higher appreciation for it. I mean, I always love that every day is different. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, we're always doing the same thing, but every day is different because of the patronage or like what you're dealing with, or with the, like your produce, all of a sudden they're out of something or like your staff, is calling out and like you gotta like it's problem solving you know and then like just building teams and and being able to have built a restaurant like as fucked up and shitty as all of it was it was so beautiful to to see it come alive and it still brings you back every day no matter what yeah that one thing that we talked about the golf thing that one thing just happens that just makes you come back for more and that's that's one thing that perplexes me as like well like a heroin too. hit yeah. Oh, I and remember. That's, and it's just, that, that's the thing that I, I find weird about here because, like you just said, every day is something different. Every day is something new. Every day is something. Okay. And I, I feel the same way about pizza. And, and, and this is the part of the concept of what pizza evolved to that I don't comprehend is, you know, I see guys talking about like, okay, we got, oh, I got, I got these electric ovens. The electric ovens are the best. You can control the bottom heat. You can control the top heat. Every pie comes out cooked the same way, you know, and, and every pie this. And, and I'm like, well, that's the fucking beauty of pizza. Yeah. They're not, every pie's not supposed to look the same. That's like your canvas. And when you're making that pizza, you, that's, so do you want to just be the same person? Every, every, everything you, you know? and that, that's what I don't get. Yeah. Is why people are so intent on fucking perfecting the pizza. Yeah. Where every crust has to look the same. The color has to look the same. You're not going to get that with yeah. pizza. That's the beauty of it. Is every pizza is different. Even if you make a cheese pie, you can make five cheese pies and put them next to each other. None of them are going to look exactly alike. Yeah. Well, in this world, everybody wants perfection. I mean, look at everybody's faces these days. Dude, the only thing perfect is the word perfect. shit in their perfect. lips. Yeah. What was that? The only thing perfect in life is the word perfect. Yeah. That's it. Nothing, yeah. nothing is perfect. Yeah. Nothing you do in your life. Is, and you shouldn't be striving for perfection because it doesn't exist. Yeah. There's nothing perfect. That's the way the world is, is designed. And it's fine. Just fucking enjoy it, man. You know, take the ride and go with it and just do some cool shit while you're doing it and just enjoy it. You know, it doesn't have to be so regimented. Yeah. You know, that was what I always loved about pizza. I, like I told you before, my... I would make a pie side by side with my dad. Two different pizzas. He had his way, I had my way, you know? And that was the beauty of it. Yeah. I didn't have to be like him if I didn't want to. I could do my own shit and still be just as good and still have people love it, you know? I mean, he used to get mad at me because he used to sauce counterclockwise and I sauce clockwise. 
and stupid little shit like that would bother him. Yeah. Oh, that's not the way you do it. You do it like this. I said, no, that's not the way. I don't do it like this. I do it like this. <laughs> I go this way. Yeah. Everyone's okay. got their own thing, you know? And, and, and as that's, small as it is. And that's the great thing about it, you know, is you can be your own person and make your own pizza and be creative and do what you want. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that that is a great place to end it. But I have one final question for you. Yes. Who's the greatest artist or band of all time to you? All right. I'm going to probably get shit for saying this, but I've, I just, I've been a fan of theirs for so long. It's, I've always been a big U2 fan. Hell yeah. U2 is great. And I, I'm surprised that, they, that no one has said U2 yet. They are, I definitely, I mean, fuck it. They, they're the only band that just showed up on your iPhone. Yeah, I know, and I didn't like that. But I thought that was and, a fucking sick marketing move. My no, sister just saw them on Saturday at the Dome. I wanted and it to go to the Sphere so bad. The Sphere, really yeah, did. looked nuts, dude. I know, I heard. And, you know, and, and the Edge, dude, the, his story, yeah. he didn't even know how to play guitar nuts. and just fucking just... He got his pedals and that's it. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and that's a really hard question because I like so many different genres of music. Yeah. You know, I'm a big... I love the Foo Fighters. Yeah. You know, I, and... I love a lot, you know, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. I love that whole genre yeah. of music. All right, dude, where do we go to get in touch with you? Uh, our inst- we have Instagram is uh, AC Pizza. Our TikTok is Angel City Pizza. Our website is angelcityla.com. And that's it right now. All right. Dude, thank you so much for doing this on a rainy-ass day in L.A. Yes. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, this was awesome, man. I really enjoyed it.